My four year AI journey could have probably been a one year journey, if I'm being completely honest with you. And I learned a lot of mistakes along the way. Today, I'm gonna to take you through my four biggest mistakes that I made so that you can shrink four years worth of knowledge into this 10, 15 minute video. Now, when I started in AI, I was chasing every shiny object. I was chasing all of the new stuff, all of the things that I preach not to do, I was doing. Tools that I learned, that I spent probably hundreds of hours learning, they're now obsolete. Nobody uses them anymore. There's no use case. I followed advice from the wrong people. I was looking in the wrong areas. And I'm basically simply just gonna give you the shortcut. I'm gonna take these, these are the biggest mistakes that I made. Don't do them. Stay on track in the, the way that I put you. Um, and you'll get to the finish line effectively four times faster than what, than what I did. So the first mistake that I made, which is quite common for everybody in the AI arena, is overestimating AI's initial capabilities. So AI is a fantastic tool, but when you look at it, you expect magic from it. So you might build something, even let's say a basic system prompt. We build out a basic system prompt and then we add that as a system instruction and we think that we've now cracked the code for generating outputs. But we don't get the correct answer 100% of the time because our prompt is only 70% correct. And that was, I, I solely bring that up because that was one of the biggest issues that I made. If you think about it, I, I was learning all these tools. I was building flows inside of make.com and NAN. And then what was happening is I was getting a mixed bag of results on the other end. Sometimes the clients would be happy with the response that I gave them. Sometimes the AI agent would break, so whatever. Like the problems were, were there. Um, you know, what... I expected it to be basically when I started out, I expected AI to be this silver bullet that would solve every single business issue. And then when I looked under the hood, I realized that actually, no, you need to be using code nodes. You need to be ensuring things are production ready with fallbacks. So I spent weeks trying to force AI to do things that it wasn't designed for. You should more than weeks, definitely months. And it couldn't replicate what I wanted it to do. So at that point, I became extremely frustrated. But in my brain, I thought everybody else was conquering AI and that it was just me being stupid, effectively. And with 14 years, 15 years now in the digital space, I was like, how can I not figure this out? Well, the truth is, is that it was simply me just overestimating AI's capabilities and expecting too much from something that's so simple. You still have to work hard when implementing this 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 mistake. Yeah, this that mistake is because you didn't. I didn't work hard enough on implementation, but a lot of it was because I was focusing on the new shiny objects that that was that were you know that were that were there. So, my second mistake was focusing purely on tech and completely underestimating human interaction with AI. So I cracked that code initially. So it felt like I'd moved past that so I could get things production ready. But I didn't understand the human element of what AI is, where I should implement it. And I would, and then I would wonder, like, I would put in a, I would put, I'd look at my business, I would look at my PPC business, and I would put a uh, procedure in place that was like weekly report updates generation. And then that weekly report update generation when my team were coming to me saying, hey, this number's out, that number's out, this number is wrong, this figure is wrong, I would be like, no, I'd be like, no, I've put the correct structure in place. This is how, how it is. When I looked under the hood, I realized they were right. It was wrong. And I didn't give it the adequate data that was necessary in order for it to make the correct decision. That can be just things like giving it the correct time, etc. This is not meant to be a technical deep dive into... AI. It's meant to be the, the 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 lessons and mistakes that I made. So I'm not going to deep dive too much, but I remember that that one sticks vividly in my mind because I almost couldn't believe it. It was like I'd implemented AI into my business and then someone was telling me that it was broken and I was almost pissed off because I was like, no, it's not. Like I've tested it, da, 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 da. But there's a massive, and this is why I'm so big on it, there's a massive difference between production ready for your company and 
being having something that's shiny and looks nice, but ultimately only gives the correct output 70% of the time. So make sure that you don't fall into that trap. Make sure that whatever you build is production ready, right? Don't cut corners. Make sure that you focus on, on understanding the human element and how that is going to be sort of interacted with. Um, because when it comes down to understanding the human element, that is one thing. So how people are going to perceive it. When it comes down to people being comfortable with their natural resistance to change, you should expect as you implement AI into your business that there are going to be friction points. Not because people don't want to integrate it as such. Some people won't. But because they don't want them to replace, they don't want AI to be replace them. But when it comes down to like resistance, it's natural. Nobody really likes change. There's not too many people that like change. A lot of people like, you know, they like like me. I love my routine. If my routine was different, I would just be off. Like I, I wouldn't be the same. So ensuring people are comfortable with their existing workflows, the reason why you're implementing them, that they're meant to be helping the business. That was something that I completely, completely underestimated. I just, in fact, I dismissed it. I didn't even give a shit about anybody else. And that was wrong because when it came to deployment, I caused myself more headaches trying to train people, trying to get them to understand why this is happening, getting them to trust the data, getting them to trust the analysis once it was correct, that is. So, you know, without involving my team in the process or involving people in the process, I ended up just causing friction, slow adoption, and ultimately slowed down my business's efficiency. So you need to just make sure that when you're looking at this deployment, you do focus on understanding the human element of it. Like it's not a silver bullet that solves everyone's problems. Not everybody is going to be as quickly literate as you are as, as a business owner um, to deploy it. Um, and that comes from somebody with 14 years in a digital background space. So if, if you're a business owner that has no experience, you're, you're, you know, you're in the shit. You need professional support in order to deploy it. But that's another thing. Now, my third mistake, I touched on it briefly, but this one is just the classic shiny object syndrome. And to this day, I still have to fight it. I speak about it. But when I go back to the early days, I was constantly jumping from one new AI tool to another. And you can imagine the pressure that that, going back to mistake two, that that put on my team. So I would find a solution. I would start a deployment. I would implement something. And then I would see a new shiny object. I would go after it, thinking that it would fix the problem. Effectively, in the UK, they say, you know, don't rob Peter to pay Paul. Like... I was just basically taking energy that I'd put into something and building it in something new because I thought that it was the new shiny object that was going to fix everything. But really, what I, were, what I was using previously was exactly the same quality as what the output was there. Or the features that this one had that were excellent, it, did, it missed the features that this one had that was excellent. So, you know, the problem, I wasn't starting with a clear business problem that I needed to solve. I was simply just looking at AI as this big, massive new wave and trying to jump on every single boat that was leaving the harbor. And you'll resonate with me if you're a business owner or an entrepreneur, because I really, you know, I really, really did deploy a fragmented AI strategy in my early days. And that was not good for business. I had to find 15 different tools. I'd go through them all. Well, I felt like I had to find 15 different tools, you know, I would have them connected. None of them would be deeply integrated. They weren't part of any major system. They were all just like ticking one box. I'd create like eight flows using 22 different AI tools to solve one problem. And that's not the way that you need to handle business. Like you can do this in a, you condense it down into the most, the fastest way that you can get to, you, the, the fastest way that you can get to the business solution the actual business problem, like the solution to that, and then research analysis, find the best tool to, that is going to solve it, deploy it and stick with it and ensure that you fix that. Don't get, you know, the sidetracked. I was chasing trends instead of building sustainable solutions and that was just a fact and I kind of hate myself for it a little bit because it took me so long to, to realize that I probably wasted like a, a good 
you know, I don't know, 10,000 hours, probably more, like wait, literally waiting on that. And then the script flips on its head. So mistake number four was that then I didn't integrate AI deeply enough. So when I looked at that, I'd finally overcome thinking that AI was this, I was just going to type something in and things were going to happen. I got over that. I got over rinsing through tools. I found a good quality. I found the, the front runners of the tools, the same ones that we use today. Like, you know, I found the, found the best in class for, for that. I got the solutions to my business problems. And then I thought, well, okay, now my onboarding system is automated. Now my two-way SMS system is automated. Now my financial report is automated. Now these main major things are, are, are automated. I'm good. I, I don't have to worry. Well, the truth was that I just scratched my, the surface of AI. And the whole thing flipped. I went from being somebody who was naive, walking through the AI world, just lost, to feeling like I'd landed on my feet. And then I realized that I wasn't integrating it deeply enough. So like, I wasn't thinking about how AI could be integrated into an entire workflow with true efficiency. To give you an example, like I would have AI create research on a business for my members of staff before they got on a sales call. So I would create a prompt, they would go in there, they would put the business URL in there, maybe a bit of info, LinkedIn, whatever, and it would scan and it would give them a little bit of a background. But what should be happening is I should be, every single team member's calendar should be scanned every day. Every meeting they have, a presentation is produced that pulls from data sources from everywhere, like internal data reports, internal communication, you know, phone recordings, all of these areas and those bits of research, and it should land on their desk in front of them before they speak to them. So I, I just flipped it on its head. I made the mistake of not integrating AI deeply enough into my company. And that is, uh, that is you know, that was basically me not tackling the problems that were at hand efficiently. So lessons learned after four years of trial and error and a few, you know, sort of forehead slaps and bangs on the wall. I guess the core lesson I learned is that um, you need to avoid my blueprint in order to be a success when it comes to AI, because I'm there now, but it took me so long to get there that I feel like I should have been here three years ago. And if I was here three years ago, where would I be today? So that's uh that's me yeah that's my that, that those are my solutions but to, to help you to kind of help you on this focus on data quality that was a big thing make sure the data you're feeding it the information is correct and actually tangible in certain cases like you you're, yourself brain dump brain dump everything of you inside of ai to get you a master prompt that is you to help you make decisions for example but focusing on data quality AI is only as good as the data that you feed it. So that's where the initial mistake started, where it was hitting the mark seven out of 10 times. Make sure the data is, 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 is good. Start small and define the problem. Define the problem, find your actual business issues that you face and then tick them off one by one. Um, don't chase every shiny AI tool. Find a production ready solution to one problem then move on to the next. Prioritize the human ele element. Depend I don't know how big your business is. You might, you might be an entrepreneur who's selling to businesses or you might own a business. I don't know how big your business is, but do not underestimate the human element. Treat your members of staff how they should be treated. And that is with due care and attention. You should be looking after them, not dropping AI solutions on them because you've been working with an AI team like mine, for example, that builds a production ready system and then all of a sudden the team have to go and learn all these new things that in one go and you expect them to understand how they all work it doesn't work like that my friend like it's not the way that it goes integrate strategically continue to learn and adapt those were my four big mistakes during my ai journey if i could go back in time that's what i would shrink down into 12 months 
don't make the same mistakes as me. Make sure that you focus on the objective, the key goal, and aim for the target. My name is Michael Elliott. Like, subscribe. I'll catch you in the next one.